I'm going to talk to you all about how I became an engineer. Did you know that only 14% of all engineers in the United States today are women? So women like me aren't exactly a common occurrence. My parents were great, very encouraging, and they wanted me to think about any profession as long as I could support myself doing it. Lots of girls that I grew up with thought about teaching and nursing, very typical professions for girls. But I knew pretty early that that was not going to work for me. I have zero patience with children, and blood and needles <laughs> really freak me out. I'm from a blue-collar kind of a town, so I didn't really have a lot of exposure to engineers or engineering, except through my dad. And my dad is an electrician, and he talked about engineers um, every once in a while, and usually because he was really frustrated at work. So one day in junior high, I said, Dad, what is an engineer? And his answer is what sparked my interest in engineering. He said, I have no idea. <laughs> but then he went on to say, but I do know this. If you want to be a part of making decisions about what gets made, how it gets made, who it gets made for, what it looks like, you have to be an engineer. They are who make those decisions. They don't listen to guys like me. And I thought, cool. Engineering is how I get my ideas out in the world. So there, there's that. <laughs> when I was in high school, my teachers and guidance counselors encouraged me quite a bit to think about journalism or English as a college major. And I don't remember anyone ever really encouraging me to think about science, math, or engineering. I thought that I needed them to, so I thought I needed to get a higher score on the math part of my SAT than the verbal part. So I messed up deliberately on some of the verbal questions. Don't you love how 17-year-olds make decisions, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish I could take that one back. But I was determined to be an engineer because I wanted my voice to be heard. I wanted my ideas to make an impact on the world. I was different than the other girls in my class, and I think I'm the only one out of about 130 girls who became an engineer. And those differences have served me well over the course of my career. I bring a different perspective to any problem that I'm working on, and those different perspectives are what fuel team innovation and creativity. But I also want to talk about how hard it is to make choices that don't fit what people think of you, that don't fit the crowd, that risk your belonging in a group, whether that's a group of friends, a group of engineers, or your family even. You see, we as a society, we put people in boxes, and those boxes are our expectations for what we think they should do, what we think they should like, how we think they should behave, and how they should act, or not. And we have boxes for all sorts of things. We have boxes for race, we have boxes for nationality, we have boxes for socioeconomic status, for sexual orientation. We even have boxes for things like height and weight and age. But today I'm going to talk to you all about girl boxes and boy boxes. And I'm going to show you how this works. So, girls out there, I can not see up there too well, but girls out there, I want you to raise your hand if you've ever heard things like this. Ready? Be nice. Sit like a lady. Don't be bossy or you won't have any friends. Nice girls don't do that. Don't talk about yourself so much. Do not brag. Okay? Now we're going to do this with the guys out there too. So all you, raise your hand if you've heard stuff like this. Ready? Be a man. <laughs> Big boys, don't cry. Man up. Stand up for yourself. Don't let yourself get pushed around. Don't be such a girl. <laughs> In fact, one of the worst insults we can give a boy is to tell him he does anything like a girl. 
runs like a girl, throws like a girl, looks like a girl. <laughs> and what about if he actually gets bested by a girl in anything physical? Oh my God, how could you let that girl beat you? What does that say about how we as a society value girls? It's like, it's our culture. And that's, that's how culture works. It's like um, a fish doesn't know that it's wet. It has never been dry. So the concepts of wet and dry don't make sense. Sometimes you have to know there's something outside the box to think outside the box. So it's not just as easy as it sounds to say that men and women can make choices, free choices, about what they want to do or what they want to be. It's not as easy as it sounds to say that men can easily choose to become a kindergarten teacher or that, of course, women can choose to become an engineer. There's nothing holding them back. It is hard to be a girl and choose to be an engineer when your math teachers tell you that your math accomplishments are due to your hard work. And you hear those same teachers say to your male classmates that they have math talent. They just get it. It's hard to be a girl and choose to be an engineer when you get the sense that boys are supposed to be better than girls in math and science. And the boys in class give you dirty looks when you do better than them. And by the way, there's only two other girls in class with you and they're friends. So when it's time to partner up on a project or a lab, guess who doesn't have a partner? It's hard to be a girl and choose to be an engineer when everyone looks at you funny when you say you want to be an engineer because they know you have never taken anything apart and put it back together in your whole life. And it's hard to be a girl and choose to be an engineer when you hear someone in your family tell you that you will never get married because men don't like women who are smarter than they are. It's hard to be a girl and choose to be an engineer when statistically you are twice as likely to hear your parents say and, and encourage you to become an actress versus an engineer. 21% of teen girls have said their parents have encouraged them to become an actress. Only 10% of teen girls have said their parents have encouraged them to be an engineer. And it's hard to be a girl and choose to be an engineer when your awesome all-girl senior design group gets asked by the instructor flat out if you feel technically disadvantaged compared to the other teams. So it's hard to break out of those boxes. It's, it's, um, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's hard to make those difficult choices. And the girls that do break out of that box, who choose to become engineers, tend to be the most determined, most stubborn, and most ornery among us. But here's the good news. We are society, or at least a part of it, and collectively, we have the power through our words and through our actions to change those hard-to-see boxes that we put people in without even thinking about it. Because that's what we do. We don't think about it. We just make assumptions. We have the power through our words and our actions to make it no big deal when a boy gets bested by a girl in anything. We have the power to encourage a boy's interest in playing dress up, a boy who wants to try ballet, a boy who wants to become a kindergarten teacher or a nurse. We have the power to recognize a woman's leadership without saying or even thinking that she's bossy and unlikable. And we have the power to encourage and appreciate a girl's interest in engineering. Today's TEDx Purdue conference theme is based on The Man in the Arena by Theodore Roosevelt. But I want to make sure, and I want you to help me make sure, that women are in that arena too, and that that arena is as big as the whole wide world, 
for all of us. I want you to dare to break down those boxes. I want you to dare to be different, to step forward. I want you to dare to think outside the box and not let other people box you in. And instead of boxing other people in, I want to dare you to boost them out. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Holloway.